In this video, I'm going to tell you how I spent the last month changing my game from a 2D isometric map into a 3D map, just like this one. Hello, and welcome to Devlog 10 for Tactics Toolkit. Uh, I'm Alan, and I'm making a Tactics game. Um, before we jump into the content of the video, if you don't know, all the, video, all the videos I make on this channel are going towards one big asset pack that I've released, and I'm happy to announce it's currently on sale starting today. So uh, you need to let me know a few days ago. It's on sale at 50% off. I know a bunch of people have wish listed it and are waiting for a sale to happen. So now's the time. Uh, anybody who wants to check it out, uh, make sure to do that. But enough of that. Let's jump into the content. So a few months ago, while trying to get ready to release Tactics Toolkit, I started playing a game called Triangle Strategy. The story of a young lord and his companions stuck between three rival kingdoms on the verge of war. And it had some of the best map designs I have ever seen in an SRPG. The verticality and scale offered by these beautifully detailed 3D maps combined with the extensive movement options of its diverse character pool made each level feel genuinely unique and in my opinion this game sets a new standard for SRPG games. And it's with this new perspective that it inspired me and I had to know what goes into making a 2.5D tactics game like this. Now if you're new here let me get you up to date with the state of the project. Since this is an asset pack I've made all of the systems modularly, meaning there are no dependencies in the project. So the movement controller doesn't care about the battle controller, the battle controller doesn't care about the ability controller, and none of them care about the map manager. This means, thankfully, that I had to change very little when it comes to 3D. So if you see anything in this video that piques your interest, um, and I don't bring it up, uh, there will be a video somewhere in my channel where I'm talking about it, like the enemy AI or the ability systems or whatever. Just go check it out if there's something you want to know more about. So, first things first. How do I create a 3D map? Well, the first place I went was Unity's tile map system, just like I did with the 2D map. Now, tile map technically doesn't have traditional support for 3D tile palettes, um, but while Googling, I discovered the game object brush within the palette tools. I'll put a link below to the video that showed me how to use it, but basically all I needed to do was enable Unity's preview packages, create a 3D prefab, in this case a basic cube, then over in the tile palette window, click where it says default brush, select game object brush, assign the prefab to the game object property and start painting. And that was pretty quick and cool, but it does leave a lot to be desired, at least compared to the default brush I would use for 2D. My biggest problem is that you can't replace tiles at a location. So, for example, on a 2D map, if I wanted to change a tile at a specific location, I just need to select a tile in my tile palette, click on the location, and poof, my new tile is here. You can't do that with a game object brush. So, you need to use the eraser tool, remove the tile, and then you can go back to the paintbrush and place your new tile with your, with your new game object that you wanted to put there. And that isn't the biggest deal, but it becomes a real pain when you want to add elevation as well. So if you want to add a tile on top of another tile, you would need to actually create a new tile map and then within the tile brush settings, you change the offset to for so then it, it appears above uh, your tile, uh, which means you have, need to have lots of tiles. So it's just, it's just very cumbersome and it, it doesn't feel very good when you're trying to create make lots of changes to the tile map. Now, since this is an asset pack, I don't want my project to have any dependencies on external tools. Um, so I did end up using the game object brush, um, but still I think once I'm done making and I start making my own game, I'll probably start looking into some different assets um, that might solve this problem for me. Um, I've seen a few examples on the asset store, but I haven't bought any yet. So if there is anyone out there that has uh, something that uses something other than the game object brush, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm sure there's a few people that would be interested. So, so let us know what you use. Once I had my fancy 3D map, uh, next up, I needed a way to generate my overlay and get it working. Thankfully, there were only really two chunks of code I needed to change in order to get the full level working. First was my setup map function. Um, originally, this would take the bounds of the tile map and it would loop through each tile and it would create an overlay object on top of that tile, uh, assuming it was the highest tile on that, like, on that Z row. Um, but maps using the game object brush don't return any bounds when you try to get them. So unlike the 2D tile map, it creates all of the game objects as children of that tile map and you can see them in your hierarchy. So all I really needed to do was loop through each game object 
and then kind of do the same thing where if it was the higher game object we put the overlay tile on top of that and it worked really good and then next the next thing i had to change was the mouse controller nothing too special here um, in my 2d levels i'm using a raycast 2d to find the tile i'm mousing over you can't do that for a 3d map obviously so i just need to use a normal raycast and that was pretty much it for the mouse controller and with those two changes i pretty much had a functional game the biggest issue was because I wanted to make this a 2.5D game, I had a ton of layering issues since Z indexing doesn't really work in 3D space. So basically, characters can't all be on the same sorting layer like I had done before. Um, so all I had to do was write a small script um, that took all of my characters and it would dynamically change the sorting layer uh, of our sprites based on the distance from the camera. Um, so the further the sprite was from the camera below the sorting order. And speaking of a camera, I made a camera controller. It's pretty simple, but basically it takes a target to focus on, i.e. the character. Then I can zoom and rotate around the target using the WSD and the mouse wheel um, with some smoothing effects and uh, some limits on like how far I can rotate. And then all I did was hook it up to my event system so it always knows who the active character is and voila dynamic 3d camera having it always focused on a specific character isn't always great typically in games the focus happens at the start of a turn but then you can move around as you like um, i haven't done that here so i might change that soon let me know if you think i should um, it's a tricky thing trying to figure out how long i should spend on the non srpg stuff um, since i'm not trying to sell a camera a camera controller like, should I spend lots of time making a really good one? Um, since it's not, it's just needed for a demo. It's not the selling point of the demo. Um, so it's it's tricky. It's tricky. I, it's, I always struggle with how long I should spend on this type of stuff. But um, yeah, if anybody ever asks for a better one, I would do it. Now, at this point, all the changes are pretty much done. Uh, everything's working. All the systems are, are working okay. But I wanted to try and make the map look a little bit nicer. Uh, something similar to the 2D maps in, in their quality. Uh, since I'm only using cubes, I wanted to try texture wrapping, so kind of like a, like a Minecraft cube or something. Uh, but Unity doesn't really support that, um, at least not without code. You can, you can write a script that does it, but it doesn't just do it straight away. Um, so I opened up my old friend Blender. I found this tutorial on texture wrapping a cube and then export on it to Unity. Uh, but it was a nightmare trying to get it to work. The, the material just would not come out with the model. It was always just a blank grey model. Um, and I was pulling the last few hairs of my head out of my head. Uh, and I stumbled upon a nice wee surprise. See, even though the material wasn't on the model, the metadata for handling the material was. So in Unity, I created a new material and attached my six-sided texture to it. Now, in Unity, if I created a cube and attach that material to it, it would look something like this. Not very good, it doesn't really It doesn't really look like we want it to look. But instead, if I used the almost identical cube that I had imported from Blender and applied the material to it, this happens, which is great. So I don't actually need Blender anymore to create my 3D tiles. Um, I just need this one cube and then within Unity, I can keep creating different materials and then just assign them to this cube and then create a new prefab variant from it, uh, which is great, which is a really, really nice surprise. And uh, I'm delighted about that. I might make a video of going through that step by step because I think it's uh, a nice little secret that um, I don't think a lot of people know about. After that, I did try spending a little bit more time trying to make it look nice. Um, I started messing with normal and height maps. Um, to add a bit of depth to the tiles, but I know very little bit of 3D art and I just couldn't get it looking right. It just always made it look worse. Uh, so I gave up and left it alone. I might try tackling it again in the future, but it's not one of those issues. You know, should I be spending time on this for an asset pack? I don't know, to be honest. But overall, I'm delighted with how the 3D map support turned out. I think it's a great addition to the asset pack and people will really enjoy exploring it. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you so much to everyone that managed to make it to the end of the video. Uh, I just have a few things to say before uh, wrap, we're wrapping up. Um, first is we have a Discord now, in case anyone hasn't seen. Uh, it's been really good actually having it. I was I was putting it off for a long time because everyone has Discord, but I've been really enjoying having these guys 
uh, posting their stuff and posting their feedback. There's a lot of really good work happening in the Discord. So if if you're making your own game or if you're curious about other people making their games, hop in, hop in. It's good. It's it's still pretty small, but um, the guys there are really cool. So so I highly encourage everyone to hop in. And the next big update that should be coming to the Acid Pack is tooltips. So that's the next video I'm probably going to be working on. Um, the next big chunk of work is getting tooltips, a nice tooltip system in place. Uh, it's not as exciting as 3D maps, I know, but it's an important part to SRPGs, I think. Uh, so yeah, so that should be interesting and hopefully out next month. So I'll see you guys then. Cheers.